Greetings, brother and Hasbro Donkey here, and we are along with the uh, with the Roman project. I finished, as you can see, I finished dry brushing all the shields white, and I also finished dry brushing whoopala, all of the actual Romans white. Um. It took me about, I want to say, a bit over three hours. So I think we're just, it's just over uh, four and a half in total at this point. Uh, but now comes, uh, now comes all the, the sort of fast steps. Um, I did forget to say this last time with the dry brushing. It is a bit tedious and it does take some time to, to get it done. But I would really recommend uh, not hurrying through this step. I think if you get this step really right, all the other steps become easier and uh, the final result starts looking better. Alright, so today <clears throat> I'm going to show you the next couple of steps, which are basically all the contrast paints. And uh, I'm gonna show you one finished product, uh, and that is for the different skin tones. So I tried them out on these two, uh, with this one looking a lot like the Chad meme, I must say. Uh, this one right here is the Dark Oath Flesh Contrast, and the other one is the Gilliman Flesh Contrast. Um, I think both of these work for doing uh, Italians. I think this one might be better because afterwards we're gonna we're gonna go over it a little bit, uh, so it will get a tiny bit brighter and I think this one this one works probably but I think I'm gonna go with this one uh, just as a just as a choice um, because I, I think the shadows on this one become really really dark and uh, I don't know I don't because I know that I'm gonna go over it again with a with a, with a very very uh, slight dry brush I think this one is gonna look the, the contrast is going to be too high between the, the dark patches and the, the brighter patches on the skin. So I'm going to go with Gilliman because um, the dark shadows don't look as ridiculous uh, in comparison to this, where they are very pronounced. So this is the color of choice for me, but your mileage may vary. I think this one is probably more accurate to what uh, you know the Romans would have looked like during this time period. Um, so... Yeah, that's that's just what you're gonna have to what you're gonna have to decide. I have decided on Gilliman flesh, and <clears throat> let's get that on. I'm just gonna paint it on uh, one or two of them, just to, to just to give you an idea. Because uh, this whole setup is uh, a bit precarious, uh, and I'm still not used to painting with the camera in front of my face. Right, let me just quickly pop this open. Also, it's ridiculously hot today, which is not the greatest. All right, with contrast paints, you want to be, uh, at least I think on, on historicals, you want to be slightly more sparing. Uh, you don't want to do the one thick coat thing. You kind of want to be a bit more gentle and sort of glaze it on. And we're going to be we're going to be a little careful as well that we don't get the paint on too many surrounding areas because uh, I do plan on using some more glazes and if we slop any of this onto surrounding areas then that will shine through in the next steps and that's not exactly what we want. It doesn't matter as much on the weapon because we're going to go over, this, over those with a uh, proper coat. So we're just going to glaze the uh, leather and cloth parts, basically. So if anything gets on the weapons or on any metal parts like this, that doesn't matter. Alright, that's the arms. And then we'll do the right leg. And again, I'll, I'm also careful with the sandals because as I said all the leather parts are going to be glazed as well 
So I don't want to put too much of this paint on the leather parts. And I'm going to go very carefully around here. doesn't matter too much if it's on the metal, but we don't want to get it on the leather straps. Actually, I think most of that is like a some kind of cloth. Yeah, it looks like there's a. I don't know if you can even see that. It looks like there's a there's a cloth uh, underneath the uh, the leg brace. So we're gonna avoid that and paint it in a leather color later. Now I'm just gonna do the neck, his ear. The hair, uh, if we get on the hair, that's not as bad because we're going to paint all of the hair really dark. So that's fine if that ends up being a little bit covered with this. But as you can see, the pre-shading that I did with the, with the dry brush is already really helping, giving us some nice definition on the face. Some really nice character with really barely any effort as you can see it's really not much more we're gonna have to do to the face to just have that look good all right and then finally the toes because they stick out of the leather boots but honestly this isn't even that important but since it's just a glaze I'm, I'm gonna do it because why not but uh, in general we're not gonna see too much of the toes afterwards but yeah as you can see with just the contrast paint and the uh, the dry brush undercoat that I did, there the skin is pretty much already done. We don't really have to do too much to it. I am going to do a very, 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 very light dry brush at the end uh, when they're all painted like this, but it's not even that necessary. And you know what? I'm not even going to do another one because that's just going to draw the video because I do want to show some other paints as well. So the next one, once all of the skin is painted as such, come on, stupid pots. The next one is going to be the feathers on the helmets. Now, historically, um, we don't exactly know. <laughs> uh, assumptions are made that, you know, they were all black or maybe there were red feathers and white feathers and who knows, but I... I don't know. I, I think the, the mixed uh, feather colors, I, I, I like that more for uh, other Italian tribes. And for Romans, I just go with straight up black crow feathers. Because, I don't know, that just feels that just feels authentic to me. Even if we maybe don't know. And I'm just going to go with uh, Citadel Contrast Black Templar. I'm going to do a nice coat over the feathers. Uh, reason I'm using a contrast paint for this is because black glazes uh, with, you know, with uh, pigmented colors, they don't usually end up looking particularly black. They're usually very, very gray. And we are actually going for some for black feathers. So uh, once this is dry, I might go over it again. I'm not sure. I'll probably decide that once I've put on a few more coats. Uh, just to see how they how the feathers compare to the rest of the model. It is possible, though, that I'll go over it a second time with uh, this, or just uh, go over it with a Nolan Oil uh, wash at the end. That's possible, too. I'll let you know. But for now, we'll leave it at one layer of Black Templar. And as you can see, with the dry brushing that we did before, that already gives us some nice texture on there as well. And basically, it means we don't have to do any highlighting or any dry brushing or anything like that. Because we already pretty much have the effect that we were going for. Right, and then the last contrast paint that I'm going to use on these. Uh, you, could, you, keep, you could keep going uh, and paint all the leather parts with, let's say, Saigor Brown or uh, Wildwood. But I'm going to use Wildwood for the hair. Um, yeah. And then I'll, I'll just uh, glaze over the leather parts with uh, pigmented colors because I, I kind of want a more sort of 
um, desaturated tone for the leather and the cloth. You'll see what I mean when, when we get to that stage. Right, and then we're gonna just put the wild wood over the hair. You could, of course, also do this with black Templar. Uh, you definitely want to go for some dark browns and uh, black tones because uh, at this time period you would not really have uh, the the blonde um, or light haired Italians yet because those are actually Germans that uh, moved there during the migration period. The uh, Langobarden, which then turned into the Lombards. Uh, so that's why you get in, in North Italy, you get very sort of, uh, you know, blonde and blue eyed Italians. They're, act, you know, ethnically speaking, they are, they are Germans uh, or Germanic, I should say. So, yeah, this is where we at. And this is what I'm going to do now to all of them. I'm going to do the skin, I'm going to do the hair and I'm going to do the feathers. And um, that shouldn't take too long. And that will already put down a lot of the work. And as I said, I, I will probably do something to the skin, although looking at it now, maybe I won't. This this already looks pretty good now. Uh, I remember it being a lot worse when I did my uh, when I did my galls, but uh, I think when I did the galls, I didn't actually dry brush the skin. I think I dry brushed all the clothes and everything, and then painted the skin in Wraithbone or something and went with the contrast on that. And I think the added definition from the dry brushing has really helped already define the skin. And I might not actually need anything else on the skin. So yeah, I think I'll just continue for now uh, and do the cloth and the leather. Uh, well, first off, of course, I'm gonna finish this step on all of them and then we'll come back and we'll do cloth and leather together. But I, I think for now, we're just gonna continue and then I'll go back on some of these areas and check them at the end. I think the feathers might need a second coat of Black Templar, but we'll see, we'll see. All right, I hope you enjoyed it so far. Uh, as you can see, we're gonna get through these really quickly. Um, and I think uh, because of the white dry brush method, uh, it's it just, it looks really good without putting a, too much effort in. And um, once they're fully painted, I'm sure you'll agree that, uh, when, you know, and they're put together into an army, you won't really notice some of the cheats that we did. Um, and uh, they'll just look good in general. And that's why I'm saying uh, do spend the extra time to make this dry brush good and don't, you know, just slotch it on and, and, you know, get rid of all the definition because the more time and effort you spend on this step, and obviously you're going to get faster doing this over and over, uh, but the more time you spend on this white dry brush step, the faster all the other steps are going to go in the end and the less the less effort uh, with the other things you can get away with. All right, I hope you enjoyed it so far and I'll see you in the next step of this tutorial when we start to tackle the cloth tunics and the leather on the miniature. All right, thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.